So, I have a confession to make. I play Star Stable. I've played it since 2015, which within the Star Stable community is uh, a pretty good pedigree. You got some chops. You are a veteran player if you played in 2015. I ground a uh, reputation for the cultics in order to get their fjord horse. So yeah, within the Star Stable community, I've got some experience and some clout. But because I'm part of the Star Stable community, uh, I watch for updates, and that means that the algorithm feeds me other fans' opinions on Star Stable. And Star Stable is hated by its fans. It kind of has like a hate dumb rather than a fandom because a fandom as you know defined by corporatism and things like that uh i think a hate them fits you just hate it you're still giving the company money and you're making them successful you just hate it and i guess i think that's really weird um i find star stable to be incredibly enjoyable and that is apparently a controversial take so i thought controversy is going to get me YouTube views, so maybe I could be controversial about something completely harmless and uh, get maybe some people who have a more established channel than me involved in the conversation. Regardless, it's the Halloween update. I like this guy. He looks like Black Rabicano, which I also have. That That's Glasswalker. That's my Black Rabicano Arabian that I got. So this guy looks pretty similar. He's just kind of got like some cool skull features and I think that's neat. I was riding my fish horse earlier. I don't log in very often, but I was having a conversation with a friend of mine about seasonal updates in games and I said I don't really think that's something that I care about that much. And then he started talking about it. He, he could admit more readily that he was a comfort gamer, that like he plays games to feel relaxed and calm and happy. I didn't think of myself as that kind of player. I thought of myself as a story player. I, I beat Star Stable, so to speak, in three days. And if you want to criticize that the game has no story, sure, that is valid critique. I would love to have more story in Star Stable. But I think a lot of the people who are doing these kind of vehemently angry, disproportionately angry, in my opinion, uh, posts about Star Stable being like money-grubbing assholes who don't do anything for the game was kind of shocking to me. I, full disclosure, used to be in the video game industry. I was a video game artist and one of the things that I did for my graduating portfolio was a three-dimensional horse. Um, Star Stable is probably I would argue one of the best horses in all of video game dumb. Among horse players, people who want to play horse games, Star Stable is really up there with how good their horses are. The players appreciate the detail and the power uh, that goes into making these uh, kind of cartoonized, stylized animals ideal, elegant, and beautiful because we like to watch horses. We're horse people. Horse movement that's done well and done right is pleasing to us. And that's seen as an invalid argument to make for the game. That it's like, well, so who cares if it looks good? Everybody cares that it looks good, man. If you don't have graphics, I'm sorry, you don't have a game. Uh, if you are trying to make money off of a game, if you do not have graphics, you do not have a game. You can ask probably any indie developer out there uh, that for the most part if you're making a game it's for practice it is for something that you need to have on your resume in order to get an actual industry job that's the way that it was for me and I'm pretty sure it's still that way now just harder because I was in the video game industry from like 08 or 05 to maybe like 2013, 2014. Anywho, I feel like the graphics of the game are a valid thing. To say that it's unfair 
that all the horses do is look pretty is I think to invalidate the, the experiences of other players, basically to yuck somebody else's yum. It's not, there's nothing wrong with liking the animation and the horses and the environment and whatever. And I, I feel like a lot of these people are making arguments from their like super emotional lizard brain that may or may not have fully developed yet emotionally because a lot of their arguments are emotional. That it's like, this game makes me feel this. And because I feel this, it's a reality. And it's like, no, your feelings aren't, aren't reality. The criticism that Star Stable does not care about the way the game looks or care about its players, uh, I think is false because I have seen the most ridiculous shit suggested that Star Stable should do, like implementing a bathroom system for your characters, that so your characters can go pee-pee-poo-poo, -poo. and I'm like, that is the stupidest shit I have ever heard in my life, and you can fucking quote me. And if Star Stable doesn't want to do that, it's because they're within their rights to call player ideas, and you can quote me fucking stupid. So, uh... People bitched that they wanted to be able to lead their horses. Well, okay, congratulations, you can lead your horses. Uh, it, that is an actual mechanic within the game now because people wanted it. Me? I could have cared a fuck less. These people want pee-pee-poo-poo -poo and lead ropes? And I'm like, bring on breeding and genetics. Like, what's wrong with you people? But I think that brings me to my big second point about Star Stable complaints is that, again, the way that I feel must be reality. It must also be true that my, what I feel is my reality, so therefore reality is truth. People want this game to be something that it is not, and I will swear by Lady Ranger Gamer that I have played every horse game that is out there. I mean, I've got cred. I used to play Barbie horse adventures when I was a child. I don't understand the argument here. It's an MMO. It's, I think it's like one of the only horse MMOs out there, period. If you want one at all, you're probably playing Star Stable. It's supposed to be something else, like this scripted adventure game with, I guess, episodes and downloadable content. And it's not that, and it was never that. It was never advertised as that. And people are like, Star Stable betrayed us by not being an episodic fantasy game with downloadable content. And it's like, it's always been an MMO where you buy horses with real money. Period. I don't play any other MMOs because I think they're a time suck. And I used to play, you know, the original World of Warcraft. And what you're doing at level one is what you're doing at level... 85 and that's not very interesting to me anymore it used to be you don't have to grind in star stable if you have money and if you are an adult player money is not a fucking problem for you and it, i realize that may be a problem with kids you do not have access to wealth as children or teenagers that you do when you are a working adult who has a job and is making their own money i i will give you that if Star Stable is expensive for you, it's okay, sure. You can make legitimate arguments about things like everything is becoming a rent trap, but MMOs were the first rent traps out there. I guess my big third point about a lot of these people, they're mad that Star Stable is making money off of them. And I guess for me, it's like if you're making an argument from emotion, you're being a hypocrite because you're saying that you hate this, that you hate that this game takes your money in order for you to have the newest horse, uh, which may cost $10. If you wanted to go on to Star Stable right now and, and like buy this horse, this like purple skeleton horse, who I do like, I think I might get her. I'm not paying money for that. I'm not paying money for that. Um, and I think that's like valid. Like, why do you have to have the most recent horse like a lot of people are mad about that and it's like there are all kinds of horses that i have not bought i only buy one possibly two like in the case of the arabian because it had really good coats 
prudence, I think, is a very important thing for you to learn if you are going to game online with other people in the future. Microtransaction hell is coming, people, and it is already getting worse. Like, Star Stable has actually remained, you know, in my opinion, remarkably tame about that because who knows? They could charge $20 for their horses or $30 for their horses, which is what everybody's doing. They've managed to keep it at a relatively tame $10. And, you know, people are like, oh, it used to be $1. I don't care. Are you blind? Have you seen what the economy has done in the last 20 years? The last 10? Like, late capitalism is here, people. It is about to die a natural death. And you're upset that your magical <laughs> uh, cartoon horses cost too much? Oh, I'm sorry. Your entitlement protests too much. You feel angry and oppressed because you can't afford your $10 computer horses when people can't afford to feed their families right now and homelessness is on the rise? I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, fuck you. You know, maybe it's like a, oh, kids these days kind of argument, but it's like, if the worst thing going on in your life right now is that you need to hate Star Stable, I can redirect you at many more worthwhile pastimes that will be, you know, the same level of moral outrage you're feeling here. Well, one of the people I just watched, Dennis Wisestorm, was like, they don't do any work for us. And it's like, okay, you've automatically outed yourself as an entitled person, as an entitled gamer, that you are looking for this game to look good by default and nobody makes that happen. And I can tell you that that is false. I, I don't know anything about Star Stable's team you know, shout out to all their hard work and everything, but I don't know who you guys are. You're apparently located in Sweden, I think. So like, this is how much I care. Like, this is how big my dog in the fight is, by the way. It's like, I don't even know the people. I don't even follow them on Instagram. I used to follow them on Facebook, but I don't have a Facebook anymore. They kicked me off for being controversial, which I'm sure is really shocking to hear. Anyway, to dismiss the art, is really rude. There are people at that team who work hard because they have to satisfy equestrians. Do you know how picky equestrians are about the way horses move? Oh my god! I've shown model horses and I cannot tell you the number of horse snobs I've met who are snobs about their horses in plastic form. Oh well, my plastic model horse is worth four figures, so... What are you showing today? Oh, well, a $20 knockoff from Toys R Us. People are snobs about their horses. I think it must be an equestrian thing because it's like a whole lot of cultures have pride in horses, that they are proud that their horses are prettier, faster, and better than yours. And I think some of that energy has to be present somewhere in Star Stable, that people are competitive, that they're like, well, my horse's cock is bigger than your cock, and it's like, I don't care, but some people care, obviously, because the idea of being prudent in terms of their finances is unthinkable to them. Like, I have a lifetime Star Stable account. They were advertising it for 90 bucks. I had 90 bucks and was like, you know, we played this game for four years at this point. I think we're going to keep playing it. Maybe we should not pay more money than we need to for it. And that's it. I, I don't pay the monthly fee anymore. And I earn star coins. And I log in maybe two or three times a year. But because there's a new horse that I want. And tack. I think I like Star Stable for a lot of the same reasons that I like model horses and you know horse video games it's it is a horse-shaped object i am attracted to it it could be a stick horse you know a horse made of sticks and i'd probably still be like is that a horse so it that's just a thing that equestrians have and i don't think appreciating that in star stable is a sin the horses are pretty guys is that not okay like that, again, I feel like my my yum is being yucked here because I am not allowed to make a point that the horses look good. It's like, well, how dare you? How dare you say that is? Like, okay, 
show me anything better graphics wise because i think the only thing better graphics wise is zelda uh you know link riding a pony around uh in Breath of the Wild and, what is it, Royal Tears coming out? This is how much I have my hand on the pulse of this kind of shit. So there you go. That is, a, Nintendo has horses that look better, and Rockstar has horses that look better. I don't even know if Rockstar Studios is even still around. Did they go bankrupt because they got in trouble? But Red Dead Redemption has some of the best horses, graphically, that you can name. And I, I'll give you that. After those two, what video game has the best horses? You know, show me. I want to see. So, you know, this guy was like, you guys are rat-brained. And it scares me because you can't think when you can't defend Star Stable. And it's like, why do they need defending? Why are you paying money for this? <laughs> and hating it at the same time. Like, if you go... And look up Star Stable videos on YouTube. You will see video game videos made about Star Stable that bitch that their horses are ugly and they're too fucking expensive from two years ago. And it's like, okay, so you've still been sucking dick for that long. Seriously? For two years, you're like, ah, this dick doesn't smell that good. I don't like sucking on it. They still get your money. They get your hate money. That's why I don't understand hatedoms, because it's like you are still in the corporation sandbox, playing the corporation's game and doing what the corporation wants you to, regardless of whether or not you're being negative or positive. Some people, I know this might be hard to believe, will actually be spiteful liars on purpose just to get a rise out of people. Is that shocking in our day and age that people would be disingenuous just to get an emotional reaction out of people? No. And that couldn't possibly be what corporations have fucking perfected over the last 20 years. We're, we're all going to rent everything eventually. So maybe that's why I'm glad that I have a lifetime account. I made the decision that solved two-thirds of my problems with Star Stable. So regardless of whether or not I hate it, they're still not really technically getting my money anymore. So there you go. I guess that's my rant on Star Stable because there are a lot of people out there talking about it and talking about it negatively. And then are like, oh, the people who white knight for SSO they can't make good arguments, man. And it's like, I, I think you're making an argument from ignorance here. Like, your, your first argument from ignorance is that you have no appreciation whatsoever for game dev and the work that goes into it and the work that goes into making, especially an MMO, good. Because usually when you're uploading stuff like this, uh, you have to make sure that your new art doesn't crash the server or destroy your game, a portion of your game. Like, could be accidentally deleted. And I don't think people appreciate that. Max. Oh, hi, Grim Shadow. I need to train you, too. There's my fawn horse, which I have not trained. There's my Marwari. Uh, I have the birthday horse. Like, everybody who's not trained yet is out. There's, oh, my, my Percheron. Look at how big he is. I love him. I got him from the Star Stable app. So, <laughs> uh, there's Glasswalker. And that he's my Rabicano Arabian. I really like him. He's probably, like... The favorite, my most favorite coat that Star Stable has ever done. Like in real life, Black Rabicano horses are my absolute favorites. They look so pretty and mysterious. And I just love that high contrast. Like I really like high contrast horses. And I mean, a black and white horse can sometimes really be all the more striking for being black and white. Because I don't usually go for Pintos, but there's just something about that Sabino boosted Rabicano that is just beautiful. Uh, my wolf horse, because his name is Wolf Walker, and he's named after that cartoon saloon movie with uh, all the the wolves in it. <laughs> Getting back to the whole idea that I am a comfort gamer, I never considered myself that. However, I will, I'm about to share something somewhat personal. Hi, Bright Shade. Oh, you're beautiful. He's not fully trained either. Um, I am disabled. I became disabled at a relatively young age and that I suddenly had to make 
massive world adjustments because it couldn't work anymore. Um, I wanted to be an art director. That was like what I went to school for and I could not work anymore. And that's a pretty big sentence to receive for the rest of your life. When I worked, when I was able-bodied, I had a horse. I had a Peruvian Paso for 11 years and he was a gelding called Compachano. He was RJS Compachano. I went to a Peruvian breeder who had a guy who was native to Peru and he had trained Peruvian Pasos in Peru and he was now training them in America and he trained my horse. Chano was lying in a field and he didn't get up when we came up to him. Like most horses, if you approach them, will, will get a little nervous. Or if you approach them in the wrong way, they'll be like, whoa, I need to get up. I need to get up to my feet so that I can kick. So it's like, you know, he's a pretty chill dude. Uh, and I wanted him because he was chill. And he was trained for nine months and the guy rode him near traffic. It was like a major highway. So like semis would blow down. Uh, at 70, 80, 120 miles an hour, loud, and he, he rode my horse, he rode Compachano next to that road every day in full Peruvian gait for nine months, so that I was never going to come off that horse. And you know what? I never fell off Compachano. Now, it's probably pretty hard to fall off a gated horse, because a gated horse is there so that you feel balanced and feel comfortable. And I needed a gated horse because my back was bad by the time I was 14 years old. I wanted a gated horse because trotting, fuck you. When I could not work anymore, I had to make sure that Chano went to a good home and I had to let him go. I surrendered him to someone who was a Lipizzaner farm and they were trying to get into the Peruvian Paso breed. So they bought Chano and then they didn't tell me that they sold him again, but he is in semi-retirement in Colorado. And I have been in contact with the person who owns him and said, if you ever need help with vet bills, please contact me. I have not been able to ride a horse since. 80% of people who live on disability uh, live below the poverty line in the in America. Isn't that a nice little statistic for you? Uh, I am one of those 80%. You know, I don't know what you're supposed to do when you can't work anymore. I have been trying to figure that out. And I was like, maybe I should launch a YouTube channel this year <laughs> since people don't seem to be giving me money for my art existing, which may be another reason why I find the Star Stable you know, hate sayers, so fucking petty. Fuck you, I do art. It's hard to make art look well. And if you think that's something you need to take for granted, then fuck you. Uh, these horses are amazing. Look at him. Look at that big moose trot or moose gallop. Like he, he's going just so like galump, galump, galump. Like there's a lot of character to the animation of the horses in this game. And uh, I really like that. It shows their personality. And you think about the kind of relationship you can have with the horse. And that's what I mean when I say I am a comfort gamer. And there's nothing wrong with that. I go to Star Stable to see pretty horses because I can't see them in real life anymore. I go to Star Stable to ride a horse because I can't ride them in real life anymore. I mean, maybe, uh, I don't know of the average stable that has a gated horse and I don't have the money to pay for that shit anyway. So it's like, yeah, I would love, I'd love to be able to ride a horse in real life and maybe I wouldn't have so much appreciation for Star Stable. But I guess I feel like, ultimately, you're yucking other people's yum and that is a shitty thing to do in this time and place. And maybe I'm the most mature Star Stable player out there, but I have credentials that would stand up to anybody. <laughs> so in your face. It's not cool to do that. And maybe that's something that teenagers and young people who maybe haven't figured out the gigantic trap that capitalism is and how we are all majorly fucked and may see 20 million people starve to death in our lifetime, leave them the fuck alone if they like the horses and the game for what it is.
especially if you don't like the game for what it is. And I don't understand why you don't get that the game is what it is. Okay? You're dumb. You're dumb and you're giving a corporation you hate your money. I think you need to re-examine your life. You apparently think that if you send bile and poison to the people that are making this product, that it makes any difference. It does not. In spite of my rage, I'm still just a rat in a cage. We don't mind sucking the dicks of our corporate overlords because they give us pretty horses every now and then. I get to ride in quiet apple trees in a beautiful place where the entire economy is based on horses. It is a fantasy world that I will never see. So maybe I like being here unironically for a little while. And I say that as um, a generation of cynics, because we are. We hated Barney because Barney didn't help us with fucking mass shootings or anything. <laughs> but uh, our cynicism saved us because we're starting to see through the lies that got our parents, basically. You know, our parents were like, yeah, sure, I'll suck dick for 40 hours a week as long as I can, you know, do it for a house and a single income. Yeah, that's great. And you know, now they're like trying to chide us. I, I've had to be prudent with my star stables. And if people want to bitch the star stable costs too much money, it's like, there's a workaround people. I am the thrifty workaround because I knew odds are I'm probably going to be playing star stable again. I like it. So I guess I'll end it here. I just wanted to do a rant about star stables and I'm like, why don't we make a star stable video? Because everybody else is doing it. And uh, it's a little bit different. It's, it's in praise of positivity and optimism and, you know, purity, because I think a lot of the people that continue to play the game and continue to like the game don't feel the need to bitch about it nonstop for two years and still not learn the lesson. Maybe it's also a betrayal of like, people are young because it's like, you really have the energy for this shit? I don't, <laughs> I don't have the energy to muster to get mad at Star Stable about something. So it's like, fuck you on multiple levels. You're ignorant and you're being overly emotional and you're being an asshole because you're trying to yuck somebody else's young. And, you know, I hear these people talk about, like, you know, oh, they're rats, they're just terrible people, and they scare me because they can't think. And it's like, no, I think you're the one that can't think because you're making all of your arguments from your own emotions, how you feel. I like Star Stable. I'm probably going to get the Halloween horse with the horns because she's really pretty also in her, like, alternate form. But man, I really want to like look at the other Pertrons now because wow, they're really pretty. Like, look at him. I like Star Stable. I will white knight for Star Stable. This has been Coyote Clockwork.